for another unboxing here on Live and Less Dice. My name is Jules, thank you very much for joining me. I don't know what this box has done to me. Clearly I'm getting some anger issues out on it. And thank you to Games Workshop for sending us this box. I wonder what's inside. Well, let's find out. Actually, I already know what's inside because the boys have already been inside it and they just ripped it out to go and make the models from it. That's right, it's Feast of Bones. Feast of Bones was in there, they've taken that out, but I'm not going to be looking at that today because that's in their capable and very grubby hands. Instead, today for you lovely, lovely people, I'm going to be get off. Okay. Oh. Oh. Talking about the two battle tomes that are coming out now for the two new, new armies that are coming out now. But these guys here, the Osirarch Bone Reapers, which we're going to be looking at first today, and then we've also got the Ogre Moor Tribes. Basically big fat lads who've got rumblies in their tumblies and they want to have a fight about it. But we're not going to be bothering with them today. It's not that I dislike them, not at all. It's just that these guys, these Egyptian inspired Death Guard troops of Nagash, well they've got my interest. So what we're going to do is break this into two parts. I'm going to look at this battle tome first. I won't show you all of it because I'm probably legally not allowed to do so because Games Workshop will probably have my guts for garters and they'll reveal my hat and it will blind you all with its shininess. But I will show you what I can of both of these battle tomes and hopefully that will help you decide which of the two new warbands that you'd like to basically put some money into. I know, I'm a good guy sometimes. So let's begin. What more could you want? He's got one, two, three, four reasons why you should buy and another three just sitting up there. So the question that you're probably asking yourself, who in the bloody hell are the Bone Reapers? Well, I'll put it this way. You know, after the whole sort of Night Vault incidents when magic was basically turned on its head thanks to Zinch and Nagash playing party favors with the world, what happened then was basically Nagash was like, right, okay, guys, I've had enough. I've had enough of this. I'm scheming, I'm scheming, I'm dreaming, and I wanna have an army that represents how much I really, really love order but also really, really want to show how much I kind of hate every living thing. And that is the Bone Reapers. They're kind of like, if the Night Haunt were the shock troops, shock and terror, these guys are the elites. These are basically Nagash's version of the, uh, the, 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 the Stormcast. Sorry, just sneeze the answer there. So just going building up to that one. Definitely not a take one. I have to look up the answer to what they were because I have completely had brain fart. Yes, they are Nagash's version of the Stormcast. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look inside right now. I'm going to show you some lovely pictures on this camera angle here. I'm going to show you some lovely face features over here of me being excited because we are going to detail the brand new general and a few of the special guys that are in there, which uh, what I've heard are pretty spicy. Pretty spicy indeed. So what they do, what they love doing, is they love collecting bones. I mean, don't get me wrong, I am a stamp book of bones. It, just ask your mum about that one. So I too know the joy of doing it. But these guys, they like collecting tithes. Basically, they use the bone as a magical source of power. They put it next to these lovely little statues that they've got. And it basically is a focal point of magic and a great thing for them to use to turn to make more bone troops. So basically, it's not only a uh, like a, a resource for them to make troops with, but also magical energy in order for Nagash to just get more and more control over everything in all of the different realms. They go along asking people kindly at first to basically just go, right, you're dead, you don't need them anymore. So what we'll do is we'll take them off your hands, do a bit of spring cleaning, and you'll uh, want us to see us again for a couple of years. Sounds pretty fair, right? The problem is, is if you don't have it, if you don't want to pay the tithe, if you don't want to cut off a hand or a foot or a finger just to sort of make men, uh, you know, ends meet, well, they don't ask twice, let's put it that way. They will wipe you off the face of the earth and have no qualms about it. And they are led by this lovely man here. His name, which I'm sure I'll butcher, is Catacross Mortark of the Necropolis. And doesn't he look like a very happy fella? Yes, yes he does. He is a fighter that was so unbelievably tough that Nagash was basically like, right, I'm gonna send my troops to take over your city. And he was like, no. And Nagash was like, okay, I hear what you're saying. How about yes? And then he was like, no, full stop. And Nagash went, hmm, that's actually a very good point. Um, I'm not gonna win very easily against you, am I? And he said, no, look at the full point on that one. 
So Nagash waited and waited and waited until he died, then he whisked him away. You are good. You're very, very good at what you do, and what you do is killing people a lot. So I'm going to make you an offer. Lead my entire elite army, and you can basically just like exist and work forever for me. And because he's part of a religion in which they believe that hard work is its own reward, he said, yes, that sounds great. Thank you very much. What are his stat lines going to be? Anyway, enough jibber-jabbering. Let's have a look at what we've got in the battle term. As you will expect, you've got a lot of detail going into the order that makes up this whole retune of all of this. So you've got Nagash at the top there, as he should be. You've got Arkham the Black, who we've seen before in previous sort of bone rattlers. And then we've got some new guys that are coming in here, which are going to be all detailed later on. But it explains how they slot into the way of life that is death. And the best thing is about these guys is they're not just one group, they're actually several groups that basically come together to form this elite unit. And you've got different versions of them that are tasked with different jobs. So you've got a more magic and spiritual one focused in the Null Myriad, and you've got the Crematoriums who are described as the Levelers of Cities, the Wrath of Nagash Incarnate, and then this word that I won't even try and pronounce. Go on, for fun, I'll give it a try. Yigimortoi. Sounds like a Pokemon. Then you've got the loving descriptions of Nagash, Arkan the Black. You've got Catacross himself, which obviously you can uh, read a bit more into his backstory and find out what he's all about. Short answer, it's bones. And I mean, look at these models as well. Look at that base size. You know a man means business when he's walking around with a base size of that. Ogres, not so big. Here too, we will see some of the newer models that are coming in to join the fray. As you can tell here, you've got, uh, see this guy who is literally shaping a bone. He's called a bone shaper, so that's actually pretty apt. Then you've got this guy, you actually get in the new battle box, whose name is Vokmortian, or Vokmortian, depending on how you want to say it, master of the bone tithe. He goes around and basically says, you made a pact with us, uh, you better honour it by giving us some bone. And if you don't, I'm going to add your head to one of these uh, little shrunken heads that I keep on a trinket around here. Definitely don't want to get on his wrong side. And then you've got a Mortar Sand Soul Reaper, who is a wizard. And uh, as you can see from that scythe, he kind of reflects a bit more of like the Cain the Wraith, Wraith from uh, the Night Haunt, who are another army that I love collecting. And down here, you've got the Arch Cavalos Zandos, Zantos, sorry, uh, their cavalry leader, and also a on foot general that kind of reminds me of the, um, the Knight of Shrouds in the way that he's posing. It might be, and you've even got a little cheeky little uh, spirit host down there, just popping up and saying hi. That's great. This guy is the person that caught my eye the most when I was flipping through it earlier on. The Mortar Sand Soul Mason, mechanical chair that walks around, carries him about while he grabs all of the soul energy and starts manipulating it into creating new warriors. So him and him basically work as a kind of uh, buffing um, uh, kind of support feature for your army. But let's have a look and see what else we've got. Of course, we've got lovely Nagash. God damn, his model is so lush. He's the most expensive model in the game. He's worth every penny. Here we go. Now we're starting to get into the uh, the differences between them. As I said before, you know, you had the crematoriums and you got the null myriad. It was just two of the ones that I picked as an example. And they've given me two examples that show you the difference. Obviously one infused with ethereal energy over here, a bit darker in contrast color. There we go, let's just see if that'll focus up. There we go. Bit darker there, and we've got a red colour here for this one because he's sort of more hell and fury inspired. And going along here, look at those guys. Ooh, they look so tasty. I can't wait to play as them. And I fear playing against them. This is something that we haven't seen much of uh, in the lead up to this. But look at that. They've got their own bear moths over here. They're going to focus up. Look at that. It's a creature that walks along the battlefield, picking up the dead and adding it to himself. And that's how it heals. Yes. And who doesn't love, look at this, I'm gonna go for a nice sexy shot. Who doesn't love a catapult like that? I feel like I'm showing you the center of a Playboy magazine. This is raunchy. Look at that, it's got legs. Go and have a look at this, which is Deathless Warriors, which is kind of like the Night Haunt ability, which allows you to uh, roll a dice every time you get uh, a mortal wound or a wound allocated to a unit, and on a six, wounds negated. A, a simple feel no pain, like it a lot. Do not have to take battle shot tests. Very useful, very useful indeed. 
Now this is the weird one here in that they don't actually get command points. What they do instead is they get uh, relentless discipline points that are used kind of in the same way, but they, le they earn them in different ways because you get, for every Bone Reaper's hero, you receive one. If you get a liege on there, you get three if you've got a Catacross on there and is your general, and you get another one for if you've got uh, any liege that's on there, and you get one for each War Scroll Battalion in your army. So roll a dice, oh, you roll a dice for each friendly Bone Reaper's unit on the battlefield, including the heroes that you've just uh, got one instantly for, and on a six, you receive an additional one. So if you roll really well and have a load of heroes and you've got your general there, you could end up having a load of command, command points that can be used in very, very interesting ways. I wonder if their command ability is more expensive. Let's find out in a second. They've also got an ability called Unstoppable Advance, which means that they can add three to that unit's move characteristic in that phase. That's not bad. For, I thought that these guys were going to be really slow. The way that they are designed and the way that they look with the heavy armor, I just thought that they were going to be a slow, lumbering force that packed a punch and would be a bit tougher to take down. But it doesn't seem to be. If you've got the uh, Staliarch people that are running ahead on their cavalry, and then you've got these guys here that are able to advance by an extra three, Jesus. Once you've decided who you're going to be and you've got yourself familiar with which legion you're going to dedicate yourself to, who are you going to pick to lead your unit? Well, there's only one answer. Only one answer. And that's Catacross. Because my god, his stat line is insane. First off, just take note by this, they have put Catacross before Nagash. Hmm. I guess they're trying to say something with that. But you might have also noticed as well that Catacross has 20 wounds. 20 bloody wounds, a 3-up save, he's only got a 4-inch move, but trust me, people are going to want to try to come to you rather than you to them. And you might notice a lot, a lot of rules here, but that's because it's all going into the fact that, as you can see from the model, he's standing in front of a few of his best, best guards. Now what this is, is that he may have 20 wounds, but the more damage you do to him, you're basically killing the people around him. You're not really actually fighting him until he deems you worthy enough to step down from the throne of bones and bone you in a different way. Because uh, as you can see here, uh, in the cut, which is his giant glaive that he's got, you can only use it once when he's taken one wound, and then it goes one, 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 two, two, so you're gaining his favor, and then when you've killed everyone else and he's down to 13 wounds, AKA he's got seven wounds left to come and take you on, he gets four attacks with it, and the shield Immortus, which is the giant shield that you can see on the model, can finally, finally be used. And trust me, it is devastating, because if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with the shield is a six, it inflicts two mortal wounds on the target in addition to any normal damage. That is disgusting. And because he's not alone, it means that he gets all of these companion abilities as well over here. So he's got a Spy Master. Once per turn, you can roll a dice when your opponent receives a command point. If you do so on a four up, that command point is lost. So a great way of just stealing command points straight away. And then also you've got here, you've got a Gnosis scroll, scroll Bearer. You can uh, subtract one from hit rolls uh, for attacks made by that unit that target, target a friendly Assyrian Bone Reaper units. An amazing. So yeah, you've got to get through his bodyguard to even get to him. And it's not like he doesn't hit hard either. I mean, the Indicat hits and wounds on threes, rend minus three and three damage. That is a lot of threes. Attacking four times as well. And that's not even the worrying bit, potentially, because yeah, he's a big boy, he's got a lot of toys. But the worrying thing is, is that he can heal so much here. He's the, uh, the most perfect of Nagash's constructs and ruler of the Ozirarch Ozi Empire, right? At the start of your hero phase, if this model is on the battlefield, you can pick up to three different friendly Bone Reaper units within 24 of these model. For each of those units, you can either heal up to three wounds allocated to that unit, or if no wounds are allocated to it, you can return a number of slain models to that unit with a combined wound characteristic of three or less. That's like the, um, the Guardian of Souls ability um, and the, uh, the, the, the Torment character from uh, the Night Haunt range, but it is so, so much better because that is at the start of your hero phase and it's three different units. He loves threes and I love him. So that's just the general, but you're probably wondering to yourself, who the hell is he leading? Well, he's got the Mortet Guard. These are the sort of basic grunts that will make up your army. They have a move of four. They have a wound characteristic of one. They have a save of four up and a bravery of ten. 
They get two attacks each. Hitting on threes, wounded on fours, minus one rend, one damage. That's if you equip them with the blades. The spear's got two attacks, two inch range, so you can fit more attacks in. Threes and fours, no rend this time, and one damage. And the Soul Cleaver Great Blade, which you can also equip some of your boys with, one range, two attacks, three hits, three wound, minus one, one. Good times. Now I know what you might be thinking. You'd be thinking to yourself, why would I choose to go for the Soul so this is the thing, even though you've got three weapon profiles, they have to be either uh, equipped with either the blades or the spears, and only one in 10 can be equipped with the Soul Cleaver Great Blade, which again, hits on threes, wounds on threes. So it's a slightly better to wound damage profile on that, that's good. They can also have a Necrophorus, which is one in every 10 models, adds one to the run and charge models for the unit that includes it, and the leader, which is called a Hecatos, gets uh, an additional one attack to that model's melee weapons. Now, as you can tell from that, that's a pretty hard-hitting group, and if you remember, they've got the Deathless Warriors ability as well, which means that on a six, they shrug off any wound, mortal or not. So, saving on fours, moving on fours is a bit slow, but that's okay when you consider that the 10 bravery means that they probably ain't gonna be running anywhere soon, not that they take Battle Shock anyway. Two attacks as well it means that if you get them stuck into an infantry unit, they're probably gonna be chopping away for a good old time trying to get rid of these guys. And that's good. Now remember I said before about how you could get tons of these uh, command points that were going on, where you can use them in units like this, even your base units. Command abilities for the Mortec Guard are that you, if it includes a Mortec Hecatos, which is the champion leader, you can re-roll save rolls for attacks that target this unit until the end of the combat phase. So let's reiterate that. Saving on fours, rolling a six, shrugging off mortal or normal wounds, and if you pull off that command ability, re-rolling failed saves. The staying power, the durability of even the most basic unit in this is pretty insane. Now, as I'm running a bit short on time, I will show you just one more and call it a day, just to tease you a little bit, because yes, do I think that this is worth getting? Of course, this new army looks amazing. After reading through their rules, every single one has a different command ability and their wizards are insane. Speaking of which, let's have a look at some of the wizards now. So what we're gonna do is look at this guy here, the Mortisan Soul Reaper. He's got five move, five wounds, four up save, 10 bravery. Soul Reaper Scythe is range two, three attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, minus one random, two damage. So he's no slouch in the battle, but that's not what we're interested in because he is magic boy. And he's a wizard, and he's got Soul Blast. Soul Blast has a casting value of seven. If successfully cast, you can either roll one dice for each enemy unit within three inches of the caster, or roll one dice for one enemy unit within 18 inches of the caster that is visible to them. On one, nothing happens. Boo, boring. But on a two to three, that unit suffers one mortal wound. On a four up, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. It's like smite, oh, just nice, nice little thing there. But the best thing is, is that the more units that are around him, he gets to roll one dice for each enemy unit that was in three inches of them. So it actually does better the closer he is to combat. So get them up. It's like a wizard that actually wants to fight. And also he's got Soul Reaper, which is you can re-roll hit rolls for attacks made with a Soul Reaper Scythe if the target unit has five or more models. And if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a Soul Reaper Scythe is six, that attack inflicts two mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends. So basically he gets all the benefits of being a spirit host while also being a wizard. That is pretty lovely. And look, there's another one there. Another type of wizard. You just can't, you just can't get rid of him. Brilliant. So there we are. Those are Nagash's elite soldiers, the Bone Reapers. The slow trudging face of death that uh, honestly I feel like the, the Night Haunt, they provided one thing, which was a fragile glass cannon of charging forward, advancing, destroying all in their path and regenerating a bit slowly, but they were weak, they, were, they, were, they weren't, they were wispy. Whereas these guys, they are heavy. They are very heavy indeed. Slower moving, but harder hitting. And I feel that for anyone who's ever been tempted of dropping the armor of Sigma in favor of picking up something a bit darker than this would definitely be the ones for them. They kind of look like a mixture of Tomb Kings with the sort of Egyptian themes that they've got going through this, but also they seem refreshing as well. The design choices are outstanding. The, the model that is their generals and their special characters, they look utterly amazing as well. I can't wait to see what the boys are gonna do with the painting job of this because I've shown them all the different painting styles and they were like, oh, I might go for this one, I might go for that one. So yes, look forward to a battle report with the Bone Reapers very, very soon. Just as a side note, bet you're wondering to yourself, well, I bet you that uh, that massive general, 
I bet you the massive general here of uh, Catacross, more sharper than Necropolis, I bet you it's pretty expensive. Well, let's just bear in mind that Nagash is 880 points. He's 500 points. That seems very, very like viable. I was expecting him to be way, way, way higher. Fortunately, he's not. And you know what's really annoying is that the Mortar Guard, who are much, much heavier hitting than any of the Chain Rasps or anything on the other side, they're only 50 points more. Brilliant. Suddenly I fear that playing against Lawson with my Nighthawk army is not going to go down very well indeed. But time will tell on that. As always, I've been Jules. This has been Live and Let's Die. So I really appreciate you sticking through with me as I unbox and basically cream over some bone reapers, creamy bones all around. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know down below if you're thinking about picking up this army. And if so, which of the following things that I've shown you? Following things? The things that I have shown you in the past seem that interesting to you. But as always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. I'll speak to you soon. Bye, guys. Have a great day.